Good evening. I'd like to call the October 3rd, 2022 planning meeting to order. Before we rise for the Pledge of Allegiance, a couple of announcements. One, I did want to make note that we did have an executive session this evening on a couple of personnel and contractual matters. Uh, so we did do that prior to the meeting. Second of all, I want to thank uh, Ms. Grothy for uh, running the meeting while I was out of town uh, a couple of weeks ago. So thank you for that. I do appreciate um, you doing that for me. And then third, to any of our parents who are here, when your children uh, come up, please feel free to come up here, uh, take pictures, take videos. You can have my seat. I'm sure any of us, will, we got a couple empty seats right here. Uh, more important for you guys to have pictures and videos. So please, you will not be in our way. Um, when they come up, just feel free to come up and, and we'll just keep rolling with it. So I just wanted to make mention of that. And with that, if you would, please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Ms. Martin, roll call, please. Allison? Here. Crane? Here. Grothy? Here. Gus? Here. King? Here. Milston? Here. Rick? Here. Strickler? Here. Thurman? Here. Thank you, Ms. Martin. Item number four, it is recommended that the board approve the October 3rd, 2022 agenda action items as presented. So, so moved. second. We have a motion and a second. Any questions or comments from the board? Any votes in opposition to? 4.01 passes. That now moves us to administrative reports. Dr. Aiken. Thank you, Mr. King. Uh, I have shared with you, I think a couple times now, uh, of our new facilities director, Mr. Luke Rhodes, uh, and some of the incredible work that he has been doing. Uh, so I thought, well, let's let's have him come out tonight and give a in-face uh, presentation on uh, some of the things that he's been working on. Uh, I think you probably all noticed today coming in the uh, new paint job out there that he was uh, responsible for and uh, took the lead on. So at this time, Mr. Rhodes, I will hand the microphone over to you. Thank you, Dr. Aiken. I, I would just add, and, and thank you, Dr. Aiken, um, not to jump on loop before he talks, but um, I just want to say publicly, I think you guys have heard me talk about the good work, as well as Dr. Aiken talking about the good work of Luke over the last two and a half months, but um, really impressed with his leadership, really impressed with how uh, he follows through uh, on the commitments that he makes uh, in terms of the work within the department and his communication. So it's been nothing short of outstanding. Um, we're really happy to have him as part of the team, and I'm um, excited for, for you to hear directly from him with the, the good work that he's done for two and a half months. So, Thank you. Um, just starting out, uh, give you guys some quick numbers on our work orders. Uh, we currently are sitting at 173 active work orders as of this afternoon. Uh, since the start of my tenure here on July 11th, we've resolved 737 work orders being passed and present. Uh, so we're moving along. Uh, as of today, we are fully staffed in the department with the addition of Jason Knoll. So that's great news going forward for us. Uh, it gives us a little bit of extra manpower. Um, also, we are making significant progress on all of our capital reserve projects this year. A couple of them are already completed. Some of those are the North Hills roof repair layover project and the oil tank removal at uh, Roundtown Element Elementary. Um, Another project is the art room doors. That'll be complete the week of 1010 for the roll up security doors that we're having put in. The high school cafeteria floor is 50% complete. I have approved the flooring replacement to go back in. That should be completed here in the short term, uh, next few weeks. Um, moving on to the auditorium sound upgrade, we're looking at a January install for that. I've approved all the work and addendums to that project. Uh, so we're just waiting for that to come around. And we are currently, I have a meeting on Wednesday morning uh, with McClure to go over our press box options to do a rebuild in place versus replacement and what that would look like uh, for that project. And lastly, for capital projects, uh, I had 
place spec and place the order for the band trailer so we can look forward to that coming uh, late December. Um, another thing we've been working on in the department as the district as a whole, we're beginning to work on our district branding initiative. So I began painting select sections of buildings to establish that the first being here at the ESC as you come in the entryway. Uh, second building will be in the next week or so. That'll be down at the Century York Middle School uh, on the exterior of that building as well. Um, followed by the high school, the gymnasium, and the atrium. So that'll be a fairly larger project, so that'll most likely take place over the summertime of 2023. Um, we will be purchasing maintenance and custodial staff district branded workwear for our personnel uh, to give us a more uniformed and unified look to the buildings and grounds department, as well as to better identify individuals on the staff for security purposes. That way they're easily, easily identifiable inside the schools. And lastly, we continue to monitor the efficiency and effectiveness of our department as a whole, looking for ways to not, not only save time, but the taxpayer dollars. Thank you. The only other thing I'll add before, uh, certainly we'd open up to any questions or comments you have for uh, Mr. Rhodes. Um, Luke and I have begun the process of working on, and this is relevant to the Finance Committee, our 10-year uh, master facilities plan. That'll be a major um, you know, project looking out again in those 10 years for um, what we envision to be the, the real needs of the district over those 10 years in terms of the capital expenditure. So um, we should be ready for that report uh, to, to deliver to the Finance Committee at the end of October. Um, and, uh, you know, some of the things that he mentioned in particular, that McClure assessment uh, that they're working on will be really pivotal in terms of our planning out 10 years. So uh, he and I have already started to work on that. And um, again, I've really appreciated the hard work that, that Luke's put in here in, in just uh, two and a half short months, which may seem a little longer to him, but um, really a lot has been accomplished in, in a very short amount of time. So, um, so with that, we can open up to any questions or comments. Any questions? I just want to say thank you very much. It sounds like a lot of hard work has gone into accomplishing and closing all those open um, jobs that you needed to do. And so thank you so much for your diligence, hard work. Very much appreciated. Thank you. And I'd also like to take uh, a moment just to say, you know, it's it's mostly the guys. I help facilitate and organize and, and keep them in the right direction, but they're really putting in the hard work for us. So. I'm just curious, are you, is your department the only one that's fully staffed? Because I know we have all these vacancies all throughout the district. So that would, that would be an accomplishment even of its in and of It's itself. one of the coolest departments in the district. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, for whatever reason, we are fully staffed. Um, <laughs> that's, that, that's rare. Not, not on the custodial side, though. So let, let's, you know, make sure that we're, we're not remiss in saying that, that it's not just maintenance. The, this is buildings and grounds, and it includes custodial services. Okay. So we are not full on that side of, uh, on that side of the house, if you will. I'll take the win. <laughs> yes. I also wanted to say thank you for all the work that you've been putting in. And I know it's been a lot, especially with all of the buildings that we have. And Ryan, you should have seen your staff's faces when you said it was the coolest department <laughs> to work in. Um, I wondered if um, the doors in the, um, in the art room at the high school, have they been installed? Uh, no, ma'am. They're going to be installed the week of 1010, beginning okay. that Monday. Good. Okay. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. The only other question I have is, as the new person and getting your staff organized and, and using, you know, getting all the work accomplished, do you feel that you have good support here at Central? I mean, I know Mr. Billet is probably your biggest cheerleader. And he has a lot of uh, good reputation among the district, so his word goes a long way. But there have been times when different departments felt like the board didn't support them or, you know, it was not front of mind when you had a need. So I just wanted to know your sense as a new guy as to whether or not you have good support. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, thus far, yes, I've had great support, not only from Ryan, but Dr. Aiken as well, as well as the rest of the uh, the administrative staff and staff in general at all the schools. They've been very welcoming, very helpful. 
Um, so I couldn't be more thankful. Look, that was your chance to ask for more money. <laughs> I need an extra three point four million. <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah, Mr. Strickler. Uh, Look, just want to say I'm delighted that you're here, and I'm always inspired by the difference um, that great leadership can make, and I think this is an example of that, and I'm really eager to see the substantive impact that you're going to continue to have on the district and we're all going to be proud of. So thanks. And keep up the good work. Thank you, sir. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Rhodes. Thank you, Mr. Billet. And with that, Dr. Zarnacki, high school report. Hello, everyone. Uh, we have not met. I'm Dave Zarnacki. I'm the acting principal of the high school. Uh, it's my great pleasure to introduce Ms. Ellie Lamison, our workforce readiness coordinator. Uh, Mr. Rob High, our, one of our wonderful school counselors, and then one of our recent graduates from the class of 2022, Amir Cooper. They're going to be joining me this evening, talk a little bit about their experiences here at the high school. Good evening. Um, again, Ellie Lamison. I'm the Workforce Readiness Coordinator at the high school, and I am delighted to be here tonight to introduce Amir Cooper um, that graduated in 2022, and uh, just a really great success story, and I thought it might be um, something that, that you would like to hear more about. Um, I'm, of course, going to give the Career Center perspective, um, but I think the, the primary message here is the amount of collaboration and coordination that exists within the high school team um, to ensure that these successes happen. And so Rob High is here tonight representing our school counseling department. Um, Emmanuel Brown was not able to be here, but um, as a social worker, he's an integral part of our team. Um, as is the administration and the teachers that all supported Amir through his journey, um, which had some definite bumps in the road, which I'm going to let him talk a little bit more about um, when we get there, um, but also outside of Central High School. Um, so the relationships that we develop outside of the high school are imperative for the work that we do in ensuring that students um, like Amir are able to get the services that, um, that are available. So I was introduced to Amir in February of last year, and I was told that he really wanted to get his CDL. Awesome, right? We all know with the issues that have happened in our logistics industry over the last several years that that's an excellent area um, for a student to want to pursue. Um, so by March, we had him enrolled at York Tech um, to get his permit for his CDL, um, and by what uh, Monday after graduation, he started his behind the wheel training. Um, and throughout that process, um, we worked with Amir to get him connected with the career link, um, which provides federal funds um, for students um, with various barriers um, to make sure that they have the training that they need in order to be successful. Um, and so all of this was available to Amir at no cost to him. Um, and there was a team of people that got him to that place, but it really, at the end of the day, was a mirror that, um, that took the bull by the horns and, and got it done. So I just wanted to turn it over to Amir to let him talk to you a little bit about his experience. Hey, how you guys doing tonight? I'm doing pretty good. Um, so I just want to thank, I just want to, uh, thank these guys right here as they've been a very big, uh, help in, um, into my high, my whole high school life, you know. I wish Mr. Brown could be here as he was a, he played a very big part as well. Um, my whole high school, uh, it was very bumpy. You know, there's been, there was times where it was scared if I was, you know, gonna graduate or not. And um, I didn't know what I, I didn't know what I wanted to do at all. You know, I didn't know if I wanted to go to college. I didn't know if I wanted to, you know, just work somewhere. But working with um, Mr. Brown and Mr. Hyde, they helped me to push to, be able to find something that I can do and um, be able to 
get to school and be able to make an opportunity of myself and be able to make a change for once. And um, with that, I told Mr. Brown that, you know, I'm thinking about getting my CDL. And he, he helped me uh, He helped me up with uh, Ms. Lamison. And what, Mille- what Ms. Lamison has been able to do is she has helped me along the way to create a career, career for myself without knowing what I wanted to do. You know, I, I'm, I just graduated in May. And right now I have a really good paying job driving truck for a, um, a, a beer company. And um, I, I, feel, I, feel, I feel good in life. I'm at a spot where I feel good in life, but I wouldn't have been able to have done that with these people around me. They provided the help and they provided the needs that I needed. They gave me that uh, extra boost that I was looking for, you know, because I couldn't just find it all within myself. But these guys have been vessels and spent a lot of time in uh, participating just to push me an extra step, an extra step every single time that I wanted to give up. These guys have stuck around and called my phone, texted my phone, came to my class and made sure that I took that extra step to be to be something and to uh, create opportunities for myself. And yeah, they, they did. They ended up coming to my house too as well. <laughs> so it goes to show that these guys really care. They, you know, they, they care about where your future could be. And if it wasn't for them, you know, I wouldn't have the future that I have right now. It, it could, I don't know what it could look like, but they made this future that I have right now. And I'm very grateful and I'm very thankful for that. And, you know, the career, the career center, the counseling, the social working, they all do their job and they deserve a very big thanks. As I know they helped out other kids that I know too, other students. And it's, it's a very, it's a very big, just weight off the shoulder. And I, I thank them. So any questions or comments from the board of. I, I was going to, I was going to say, yeah, go ahead. If it's okay. Absolutely. It's okay. Um, it was, I don't want anybody here to think that it was a selfless act. All the meetings, phone calls, worrying, pacing. It was totally selfish on my part. Um, <laughs> it was because he's an inspiration. He, he had so many reasons to give up. It's not even funny. I've seen people give up way for way less than this. And, and I like the word you used encouragement. No, we would sometimes yell at him. Um, <laughs> if I wasn't, if I wasn't in the lobby waiting for him, Mr. Brown was in the lobby waiting for him. Accountability. Uh, you know, and, but he, as Ms. Lamas said, he put paper to pencil. Um, he did it. Um, but I, I, I just found him to be an inspiration. He always had a smile on his face, it was a spring in his step. He didn't need to. He did not. Um, but he did it. And that's what I found so inspiring and encouraging from him. Um, and, and I look forward to his firstborn being named Robert after me. Um, <laughs> uh, if you remember, that was one of the promises. So that's all I wanted to say. It was, it was a selfish act because he was such an inspiration. So, Amir, if you do have a baby girl, you can name her Ellie. Or, uh, uh, or Roberta. <laughs> So, Amir, I just wanted to say I'm very proud of you. Um, Thank you. All of those accomplishments are great. Um, Graduating from Central York, also completing your certificate with your CDL license, securing a job with with a company. That's awesome. So um, very proud of you and and keep up the great work. And I know you're going to do well. And um, also to um, Mrs. Lamison and Mr. High. And, and Mr. Brown, we are also very proud of you. We know, I know personally, the hard work that you guys put in and, and how much you care about all of your students. So um, Amir, you're right that you're not the only one that they're pushing and, and so proud of your perse- perseverance for just pedaling through and not giving up because it sounds like, you know, you didn't have a fair shake. So um, good luck to you. Thank you. I appreciate that. And just a little extra side note, you don't have any student loan debt. <laughs> <laughs> no, I do not. No, no debts or nothing. I just wanted to say this is such a wonderful story to hear, and it just shows what Central York is capable of. We're not, not every kid is, is college bound. Not every kid is going that path. Not every kid is going to needs academics and, and needs that push. They need other pushes. Um, sometimes just to get to school, just to get to your job or, or get to where you need to be. And so thank you for being a wonderful, successful, and I could hope to you continue to be successful um, example of of what that is and what it means to not, you know, not 
not always follow everybody thinks, oh, you graduate from high school, you go to college, and that's what the goal is. Not always the goal. So thank you for being a wonderful example of, of another route. And uh, I hope it gives inspiration to a lot of other kids that are coming behind you and in, in, through the grades of, of Central and every other school that uh, you can have a really fulfilling, wonderful uh, journey. Um, and it doesn't always have to be about um, hitting the books. So thank you. Thank you. About how many students are you working with on any, in any given time slot? Like now, how many are in the career situation where you have to muster all these resources to, to help them find their way? So it fluctuates all the time. Um, I oversee our internship program. Um, so I have about 70 students doing internships. Um, I'm overseeing the um, medical assistant program that we have right now. Um, we have five students enrolled in that as well in a, as an electrician pre-apprenticeship program. Um, and then we do all kinds of career exploration activities, field trips, and having speakers come in. And then um, as students need specific guidance and direction in any particular area, then I meet with them one-on-one -on -one, um, to help determine what their path is. If they have an idea of what their path is, that's great. If not, then there are some resources that we can use to help kind of work through that. Um, and so, but it is a team effort. Um, again, I'm part of the school counseling team. Um, so there's a lot of collaboration that happens there and um, with Mr. Brown in some cases. Um, we also have kids that go over to York Tech every day for a half day. And we have, I think, 25 kids um, at last count doing that. Um, so there's a lot, um, but there's definitely a strong team approach to making sure that we address all of those kids and, and their various needs and where they are. Um, you know, we have kids that are doing internships in engineering firms and law firms, and we also have students doing internships in, in the medical field. So it's meeting kids where they're at. Well, Amir, you should be very proud of yourself because you took advantage of the opportunity. There are so many kids who you want to help, but they have to, they have, to have the desire to be helped and to put in the hard work. I just want to know if you can get him to be an ambassador because he's articulate and positive and he should be our poster boy for your, for your efforts. <laughs> so you. York Tech said literally in an email that I was reviewing today that they wanted to make him a poster boy, literally. Um, and Amir and I, when we were talking and preparing for this evening, um, Amir agreed to come in and, and chat with some of our students that are hitting some of those barriers um, and coming in and talking to them about how he was kind of able to to make that, that turn. Um, and so... I look forward to having him come back and help to inspire others as he's inspired Mr. High and myself as well as our admin team. I think Ms. Landis is selling herself short here. She works with every kid in that building. You bring in all the agencies, all the workforce, you know, um, coordinates all that. I work with her in the military. I, I, I think you're selling yourself short. Yeah. Any other? <laughs> Any other questions or comments? Real quick, I would like to say thank you for, for all of you being here. Young man, thank you for uh, doing what you do and, and, again, for being a great ambassador for this school district. Um, keep hustling. Keep doing your thing. Um, Ms. Lamison, I, again, you know, I think the world of your program, as someone who's been able to benefit from uh, having interns um, in their office and, and currently have another one. Thank you for for your program because again, I, I think it's uh, it's a benefit, yes, to the school district and to those students, but it's a benefit to the to the community out there, to the business community, and to to people who are looking to hire and again making hiring decisions. So, uh, thank you very much for for all you guys do and round of applause for you. Thank you, thank you guys. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Harper. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening. Sorry, we're playing musical chairs here. Um, so thank you uh, for having us this evening. 
Uh, today, I brought along with me two of my teachers who oversee the theater program at the middle school. So I think that the theater program at the middle school is something that not a lot of people know about. So the middle school is the first time that students within our district can participate in theater. And we get a lot of kids involved um, in that, a lot of kids who try it for the very first time um, and find out that they love it. So I'm going to introduce to you tonight Miss um, Lizzie Goheen and Miss Haley Paiva, and they brought some students along with them as well. Hello, my name is Lizzie Goheen, and I am the director of the Standing Ovations Drama Department at the Middle School, and I'm excited to be here with some wonderful people. So at the Middle School, Standing Ovations has three activities that we're doing. Um, at the beginning of the year, we do a boot camp. This is the first year that we've run that. It's for students who are not sure if theater is for them. It gives them an opportunity to see what they need to do as far as auditioning and meeting students, learning about what the cast is doing, what the crew is doing. Then we do do the fall um, play. And then in the spring, we have an intramural where we get everybody back together and any new people that would be interested. And we do some team building games and some short skits for the kids to be doing. Hi, I'm Haley Paiva. I'm the assistant director of the Standing Ovations. And so we brought five of our returning members, cast and crew members, to talk about what we do, what are the benefits, and our fall production. So we have Grace, Kaylin, Bella, Aroma, and Honey. Take it away. So we're Roma and Honey, and we're going to be talking about the benefits of theater. Some of the benefits of theater are confidence building, because you need to accentuate yourself and be on stage so you have a moment to express yourself and get comfortable with yourself. Another thing is team building, because you have to work together to put on a production if you're in cast or crew, no matter. It also exposes you to acting career paths if like it was something that was interesting to you before, but you've never done acting before. You had an opportunity to do it now. It's also making new friends because you get to meet new people and broaden your horizons on what they're about and what they stand for. You also learn tech if you're in crew because you get to do the curtains and the lighting. And you also learn problem solving skills because not all the time are the directors available to you for help because they might be helping someone else. So you have to work together and help each other. Hello, I'm Grace, and I'm talking about what we have learned in the play. Theater has taught us how to compromise with others and how to see each other's visions. We've also learned how to address a crowd. Going along with that, we've learned how to project our voices without yelling. Because of theater, we've learned how to improvise actions and sentences, and so forth. I'm Kaylin, and this is Bella. And today we will be talking about the fall play, Scared Silly. So the genre of the play is scary but funny, um, basically spooky comedy, and it's more comedy than spooky. It includes zombies, witches, vampires, ghosts, aliens, mummies, werewolves, and many other characters. There are three main characters in the beginning, middle, and end. They are telling the story. The rest of the characters are the scenes that, that are in the story. On November, Friday, November 4th, the... Um, we will be having the opening night of the play at 6.30, and on Saturday, November 5th, we'll be having our last production. You should come see it. We hope you enjoyed our presentation. Any questions or comments for them? I have a question. So when my kids went to the middle school, um, the, the, the play was done by the music department. So is this instead of that, or is this an addition to? Go ahead. No, you go ahead. 
Okay. Uh, well, in the past, it's usually been the music department, um, but the person that did it is no longer able to do that. So uh, Ms. Paiva and I did had a, a great interest in it. So we volunteered and this is our second year and we're pretty excited to be part of it. That's great. I was I was wondering um, about that actually because I think I know what the issues might have been, um, and so um, that's fantastic that you've kept it going and given this uh, new generation, I guess, of of middle schoolers the opportunity because it really is great. Um, there is uh, community theater, but not everybody has access to that. So this is a fantastic way to get you guys involved, and I hope um, I know my kids absolutely love theater, and so I hope that you guys are enjoying it as much as they do. It's great. Thank you. So what is everyone's roles in the, in the, in the play? So I am a stage manager, so I help. Can you turn the mic so that? Oh, yeah. Is it on? Yeah, is it, on. yeah. Is it on? Mm -hmm. oh. So I'm a stage manager, so I help out around the stage with what's ever needed. Um, I'm in the, <laughs> The true meaning of Halloween, I'm Alicia, and in the last scene, which is the attack of the cafeteria zombies, I am Taylor. I'm in the first little skit called The Ghost Agency Waiting Room, and I play Bernadette, and I'm also in the last scene, Attack of the Cafeteria Zombies, and I play Wendell. I play Janice in The Midnight Club, and in the last scene, Attack of the Cafeteria Zombies, I play Tagamet the Alien. I'm a crew member, and I mostly do the background of everything. Great. Sounds wonderful. How many students do you have involved in the play? This year, it's about 50 kids. So uh -huh. we got about 40 on stage and then 10 behind the scenes. Okay. That's a lot of work. Yes. <laughs> a lot of children <laughs> but we are very happy to announce that it's um, more than we had last year so we're just so excited that we have so many students who are willing to take that risk and and join us as the mom of a central graduate who is involved in high school musicals and a seventh grader who is currently involved with this group I'm so excited that they have that opportunity to start in middle school and see what it's about and try it and um, I know my daughter is having a great time so thank you. Should the audience dress up to come to the show? That would be kind of fun, oh, wouldn't it? Yes. <laughs> Any other questions? Great. Thank you again for being here tonight. Excellent job. Hi, everyone. Good evening. Um, it is my pleasure to have Sinking Springs take the stage this evening to share a little bit about um, some of the programs we have at Sinking Springs. Tonight, we're going to spotlight one program in particular, and um, I have the students here, so I'm just going to hand the microphones over to them and put them in charge. Hello, we are happy to be broadcasting live and in person this evening to share a scoop about Singing Springs. My name is Lily and my friends and I are here tonight representing SSC TV. My name is Adelaide and SSC TV is a daily morning report for students created by students. Our school librarian, Mrs. Cox, supervises the production, but the planning, writing, interviewing, production, and editing are in the hands of the students.
Good evening. My name is Eva Anderson. And my name is Rose Bonaducci. We want to tell you why SSCTV is so helpful. SSCTV provides the students and staff at Sinking Springs with important information. Each morning, we share the weather report, the day's lunch menu, words of wisdom, interviews, and special announcements. My name is Noah Mickley, and although we've been recording our reports and sharing a link with the school, we hope to soon broadcast live. Perhaps there's a board member who would like to be interviewed by SSC TV. Let us know. <laughs> Hi, I'm Lily, and I'm back to say you why I joined SSC TV. <laughs> I joined SSC TV because I wanted to have experiences <laughs> working with a group of awesome people <laughs> to produce. <laughs> An amazing show that people can see every morning. Hi, I'm Isabel Gable, and I joined SCCTV because I thought this would be a good opportunity to help with the school's morning announcements. I also thought it'd be fun to make new friends. I joined SSCTV because I thought, because I was asked and interested in the program. I love having the opportunity to work with an amazing group of people. I joined SSCTV because I wanted to be included in a school activity and realized that SSCTV is way more interesting than I imagined. Hi, I'm Bailey Inge, and I joined SSCTV because I wanted to see what it would be like, but I'm so glad I joined because it has shown and taught me so much, like learning to speak in front of a whole audience. We end each broadcast with the National Anthem and the Pledge of Allegiance. However, each student knows we cap off our presentation with a few words of wisdom. We want to end our presentation tonight in the same way. Good evening, Central York School Board. This is Eva Anderson and Noah Mickley with a few words of wisdom. This evening, I want you to think about all the good people who help make your life better. People like your teachers or your doctor or the police and firemen who try and keep you safe. Now listen to this important idea. There are no limits to what you can do if you believe in people and want to improve the world. Remember this. Every day, all of... Skip my part. <laughs> If you can believe that people do good and wonderful things, and if you really want to make the world a better place, there's no limit to what you can do. Remember this. Every day, all over the world, there are good people doing wonderful things that make the world better. And you can be a person like that, too. The sky's the limit when you believe in yourself and others. With something to think about, this is Eva Anderson. And Noah Mickley. Make, make it, it a great, great day, day or not, the, the choice is yours. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we want to uh, give the board the opportunity if you have any questions for the girls, now is your chance. Are you all involved, all seven of you, every morning? Well, some well, some of us do um, do like the backstage stuff, and some of us are on screen. Okay, because you guys did a great job of just jumping from one thing to the other. I was getting a little bit confused, but you kept it all together. <laughs> it was great. Yeah, I would say you're um, jumping from chair to chair. You you were doing such an excellent job. You must work very well together. Um, I just want to say I'd like to nominate Mr. Kyle King for your first interview of a board member. <laughs> he's quite in, He's quite interesting. <laughs> he would be a good choice. Just curious, do you have any boys on your group? We have one. We, no, we, no, two. We have, two. Two. We have two, um, this but is, they're not here with this us. This is just um, part of the group. We are just, um, this part of the group is um, all involved in the same two classrooms, but there are more people that are in SSC TV. Well, with all that moving around, you ought to talk to some of the uh, other teachers who are doing theater arts because that staging and moving and not bumping into each other is really pretty impressive. Staging practice is a great deal. Uh, and uh, we have a they did give, give up a lot of, well, we didn't give up lunch. We ate at working lunches and they asked basically that they could practice and rehearse today. Very nervous, but they did a wonderful It was a great presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you, everyone, for being here tonight. That was awesome. And again, in all seriousness, I'm sure there's 
every single board member would make themselves available to you if if you wanted to do an interview. Um, and if if these are recorded, um, if we could see a recording of their uh, morning announcements, I think that'd be really awesome. So if you could uh, forward that to us or direct us if that's on the YouTube page, that, I think that'd be awesome to see. So uh, now one last thing before you go, do you have a weather report for tomorrow? Um. We did this morning. Oh, we, we, did, does anybody we, remember it? we did it this morning. Does anyone remember it? Okay. What, well, what's the weather report for tomorrow? The ones on TV aren't correct anyway, so it doesn't matter if you're... We're always correct. <laughs> <laughs> well, then I'm watching. The girls are actually, we actually have the broadcast for tomorrow. That's what they're watching right now. Okay. To hear the weather report for you. It's on our thing. We have, it's mostly cloudy. Is that it? And, and, and breezy. It's usually but always cloudy. Occasional. There's going to be occasional rain, too. All right. <laughs> I think we were all hoping for some sun. <laughs> I guess we'll have to wait another day for sun. Then. So. Awesome. Thank you guys again for being here. That was awesome. We'll give everyone a moment. Okay, that brings us to our first period of citizen comment. Again, I'll read the rules uh, for public comment once, and then again, you'll have this first public uh, first section of public comment, which is on any matter that appears on this evening's agenda. And then at the end of the meeting, you'll have a second opportunity to speak on anything that you wish. The Board of School Directors encourages comments from community members during the citizen comment section of the agenda. Upon being recognized by the board president, an individual should state his, her name, confirm that they are either a parent, guardian, resident, taxpayer, district employee, district student, or anyone representing a group or firm in the community or school district, and may speak to the board for a period no longer than five minutes. No participant may speak more than once on the same topic unless all others who wish to speak on that topic have been heard. The board requests that neither complaints concerning job performance nor allegations of misconduct relating to specific employees or students be raised at a public meeting. To the extent citizens have concerns about such matters, they should be referred to the superintendent. And with that, the floor is yours. Good evening. Hi, I'm Cindy Peace, and I am a parent. I wasn't going to say any, I wasn't going to speak tonight, but with Mr. Rhodes coming up here, it reminded me of a conversation my daughter and I had. Um, I guess in the girls' bathrooms, that their the locks on the doors are broken. So, if we could look at that, I guess in Hall Five, there's in the girls' bathroom, there's only one stall that locks. What building is that? High school. I'm High sorry. School, okay. That's it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for bringing that to our attention. Good evening. Shelba Eller, taxpayer. <clears throat> um, this was really great uh, presentation tonight. Uh, especially the the career um, career counseling that is so educational I highly um, appreciate that in the schools and it is so nice to help kids you know with this opportunity uh, when they get through school as far as their careers um, but tonight I wanted to bring to your attention about the independent contractor agreement 
there's something about this that concerns me, and I just would like you to look into it before you you do a final vote on this. Uh, we saw tonight good counseling, and that's what we want. But this counseling is goes out to third parties, and this provides services. And it sounds like this could extend uh, pretty deeply because it's psycho psychological uh, evaluations and so forth. And my concern is, as I read through this agreement, um, I did not once see anything involving parents. And when you involve this outside counseling, to me, the parental um, involvement in this is critical. So I would like to see something like the contractor for further warrants that she has the permission of any and all regular employers, supervisors, and otherwise to provide the services to Central upon receiving parental consent and authorization. So that is where my concern is. I am so fearful that this is being done without parent consent. And why I'm so concerned is because this was recently a newspaper article, which I'm going to give you all a copy of. It was September 23rd. It happened in Dover School District. That a mother went forward uh, at the board meeting. It was reported that um, after more than a year, she found out that her daughter was being referenced as a male and had outside counseling and therapy, and uh, the, neither of the parents were ever contacted. And I read this article, and then I saw this on the agenda tonight and read through this contractor agreement. And I'm putting these two together because I my thought was they actually sent this child to get to a hospital for therapy. And I thought, who is paying for this? So the comment is the mother said the school faculty began calling her 12-year-old child by male name, never informed her or the father. They took our, pen, she says, states, I they took our parental right to know about an important piece of our daughter's life and we should have been made aware of. As a mother, it hindered and my ability to seek the emotional support and delayed me from getting appropriate treatment that would have allowed my daughter to deal with the emotional struggle she was facing regarding this matter. The mother said the district negatively impacted her child's emotional and mental state by not including her on what was happening. She said this culminated with the school sending the child to the, uh, the hospital for an evaluation and inpatient therapy. The school still did not inform the mother of the child's gender identity in, in class. She concluded by stating parents have the right to know about gender issues at school. What was really disturbing is in this article, you'll see that it says, according to the Pennsylvania State Department of Education, there is no state or federal law regarding name and pronoun use in public schools, and the policy decisions have been left to the individual school districts. Well, if they're being left to the individual school districts, I'm bringing it to your attention. We need to have a policy in place to protect the parents from this ever happening. The Pennsylvania Department of Education has provided equity, inclusion, and belonging uh, guides with information to help schools set policies on LGBTQ student issues and addressing disabilities. Um, my concern is they're encouraging this in the classroom. So I hope you all read this article and please prevent this from happening here at Central. Thank, Thank you, you Ms. Heller. Do we have anyone else who wishes to address the board at this time? 
Yes, ma'am. Good evening. Hi. My name is Carrie Ayala, and I'm a parent. My daughter is Selena Ayala, and she is in the multi-age classroom at Sinking Springs. Um, and my question is, um, with the new Into Math program, my understanding is that with that new program, her ability to move at her own pace in math is now no longer. And I was wondering if the multi-age classroom specifically was taken into consideration when that math program was decided upon. And I'm also curious to know if more of the personalized learning, um, personalized learning, I don't know what the word is, if it's, if it, yes, if it's going to continue or if more content areas are going to be taken away from that. Ma'am, Dr. Uchif would be the best person to answer that. And unfortunately, uh, he had a family emergency uh, this evening and is unable to be here. If you give Dr. Aiken uh, your contact information, sure. we will make sure that he reaches out to you uh, immediately. Great. To Thank get you your questions answered. Thank you so okay. much. Is there anyone else who wishes to address the board at this time? Okay. 7.01, which was uh, to be a curriculum update. Again, unfortunately, um, Dr. Uchef unable to be here this evening uh, due to a family emergency. Uh, so that has been uh, postponed. We will do that on October the 17th. Uh, so that brings us to 7.02 field trip requests. Yeah, just briefly, uh, we have five uh, requests on there, uh, all pretty straightforward as to uh, what they would encompass. Uh, anybody has any questions, we can address those. Any questions? 7.03. Bill, if you want to talk briefly about that. Uh, just in general, um, the positions that are under 703, the teacher leader, subject area facilitators, and teacher leader approvals, um, those are um, contracted positions. They're, they're in the contract, um, and those, those positions within the building are really critical for planning um, either departments, helping to organize departments, helping to carry the vision out. Um, that administration has. They work alongside of the administration, help lead their, their various departments or grade level teams. Um, so they, they fill a critical role. Um, maybe look at it as a liaison, if you will, between um, administration and, uh, and, and the teachers. So um, this would be an annual approval of those positions and those teachers that are, that are called into those positions. Does anyone have any questions or comments? Ms. Billman, is there anything else that you wanted to add to that as well? Ryan, cover it. Gotcha. Thank you. Awesome. Nice job, Mike. I, I have a couple <laughs> questions. Um, first of all, how are these leaders selected? Let me ask you the questions, and then you can answer it anyway, because I'm not sure who has all the information. How are they selected? Um, what qualifications are required to be a leader? Um, is there a salary increase or a stipend or something associated with that position? And I was going to ask what the job description, not job description, but the functions, you pretty much address that. But I'm curious as to how these people are selected. Is that, are they selected by the teachers? Are they selected by administration? Do they volunteer? You know, just some, some sense of how they get into these leadership positions. Yeah, I, I look back just to confirm with uh, Ms. Billman, but they, the, these positions are posted, um, so they have to apply for them, and then there would be a, an interview slash selection process. Um, typically, these teachers are more veteran teachers who have some experience, although not always the case. Um, we, we look for the best fit. Um, there is a stipend, and I believe that's in the back of the contract. Uh, it's part of the back of the contract uh, agreement that that was reached uh, between you, you all and, and CYEA. So um, 
so uh, again, there, there's there's an interview process, if you will, for those that uh, choose to apply for the positions as posted. And so you do this interview process every year. Does does that mean there's a pretty much of a changeover, or do the same it, people stay in those positions? Practically speaking, like, you know, in Congress, yeah, I, somebody's been there 35 years or something. Right. Um, certainly, if, if, if the, the person that was in the position, if they're interested again and they did a fantastic job, then then we absolutely would would uh, have them continue if they would want to. Right. Um, they would still need to. That's an annual uh, posting. Um, so they would still need to apply again. Um, and uh, so, yeah, it's um, kind of with anything. If they're doing a great job and they still want to be in the position, we'll we'll, we'll keep them on board. Any other questions? Thank you, Mr. Billet. Now moves on to 7.04, adoption of policy 200. If you do not have the agenda with you, or for those who may be watching online and don't have it, uh, the first reading and tentative approval was on September 19th. The second reading is this evening with, uh, unless there are any changes, a final adoption vote on October 17th. Dr. Aiken, I didn't know if you had any. Uh, no, I, I just take any questions you might have on that as well. Uh, that was uh, kind of the red line version, if you will, was, was sent out. Uh, I guess it's more yellow. I'd just like to make a comment. Um, I did not receive any questions or comments from anyone since it was put on the agenda as a first read. So please, if you have any, forward them, call me, contact the administration because we do want to vote on this. And again, you should have received the yellow highlighted version that shows the changes to the existing policy. And the administration is moving forward to implement procedures and tightening up the, the process so that we have going forward a much better, more reliable source of residency information. So just... We will vote on this next time. So if you have comments or questions, get them out as soon as possible so we can try to get them resolved before the meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Guth. And thank you, Ms. Bellman, for your work behind the scenes on, on this one and, and all things policy related. 7.05, approval of independent contractor agreement. Yeah, if Ms. Mason would come up too, I think she can provide some context to this. Uh, maybe some of those questions that were even addressed tonight uh, or raised. Um, Hi, everyone. So the school psychologist independent contractor agreement, currently the school district has employees three full-time school psychologists. We are in need of a half-time school psychologist. We've always had a half-time school psychologist. And the reason why there is this opening is when I moved up into the director position, my former position as a special education supervisor became open. We had interviews. We hired the one of the school psychologists that was um, a good fit for the position. So her role became open and that just continued to pr proceed. And she, the person that we hired for the full-time position, was our former half-time contractor. So the purpose of this um, half-time school psychologist is really to do um, meet with, they're going to work primarily at the middle school and meet with the team at the middle school to decide um, specific needs of students and whether or not specific students would need to move forward with special education, psychoeducational testing. And that is always done with parent permission before we would to move forward. Um, once they have moved forward with the testing, then they would be responsible for holding all of the meetings with the teams and potentially moving forward with the IEP process. Any specific questions? How does the counseling, whether it be staff or this contractor, how does that coincide or work with the TW Panessa? This is completely independent of the counseling or TW Panessa services. Okay. This is really just solely special education uh, school psychologist where her primarily primary role would be to look at students, evaluate them, and to see if they would be eligible for special education services. 
Okay, so it's strictly to determine the level of special education services that are required, not Correct. not just psychological evaluations of students no, or no. personal or mm -mm. psychological problems. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. The independent contractor agreement that we're, uh, is forward for us to approve, presumably the structure of this agreement is consistent with past agreements. Correct. It's a different name. It looks mm -hmm. like our, our contractual form, and we're putting the name in of the individual that will serve as the contractor. Is that right? Yes, that is correct. And this contract was reviewed by our solicitor. Okay. As mm -hmm. opposed to, this is not an agency. This is an individual. This is an independent contractor, contract yes. And it's consistent with what we've done in the past. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like from your comment, that the roles, the duties of the independent contractor fall within the policies and processes of the district, just as they would for an employee status. Is mm -hmm. that right? They run yep. the same supervision, same policies. Correct. The independent contractor is used where we cannot easily um, employ a part-time person. Is that, mm -hmm. that, that is correct. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Are we continuing to search for a, an employee or are we going to do this independent contractor for a defined period of time and then the independent contracting role would cover this school year and then we would look to reevaluate for the following school year any other questions okay thank you miss mason mm -hmm. 7.06 unemployment compensation program. We, um, since 1980, the district has used the interstate tax service to um, process our unemployment claims, um, unemployment compensation claims. And this is just every October, this is brought to the board to continue that service. Um, we are char at the current rate right now. We're charged sixty eight cents per employee per per quarter, and our average yearly cost is twenty three hundred dollars. Um, they processed for us for us last year thirty claims and attended two hearings on the district's behalf. And so we're just asking for continuation of that service. Any questions? Okay, thank you, Ms. Martin. Brings us to. Our first action item for the evening under co-curricular 8.01. It is recommended that the board approve the following individuals for athletic co-curricular appointment as presented. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Are there any questions or comments? Any votes in opposition? Seeing or hearing on 8.01. Passes. We will take 9.01 as a roll call vote since it is dealing with salaries. And then we will take 9.2 through 9.4 together. So 9.01. It is recommended that the board approve the 2022 2023 confidential staff salaries as listed. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Ms. Martin, if you do a roll call vote, please. Allison? Yes. Crane? Yes. Grothy? Yes. Gus? Yes. Milston? Yes. Rick? Yes. Strickler? Yes. Thurman? Yes. King? Yes. Thank you. We'll now take 9.02 through 9.04 together. 9.02, it is recommended that the board approve the following resignations, retirements as presented. 9.03, it is recommended that the board approve the following transfers and changes as presented. And finally, 9.04, it is recommended that the board approve the following individuals for employment as presented. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Are there any questions or comments? Seeing or hearing none, are there any mo votes in opposition to any of these three items? It's not appear so. So 9.02 through 9.04, all pass. 10.01 under community. It is recommended that the board approve the following fundraisers as presented. 
So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any comments? Seeing or hearing none, any votes in opposition? Seeing or hearing none, 10.01 passes. 11.01, .01, regular meeting agenda review. Dr. Aiken. Yeah, we would have the uh, discussion items tonight um, on the on the agenda for the 17th. Uh, we also have personnel uh, and, and any contract agreements, uh, rental agreements, excuse me, um, for, uh, for the 17th. Thank you, sir. Any questions for Dr. Aiken on that before we move on? Okay. That brings us to 12.01. This is our second period of citizen comment. Rules for public comment remain the same. However, members of the public may speak to the board on any item or any uh, topic they wish. And with that, the floor is yours. Okay. Number 13, 13.01, board comment. Are there any board members who wish to address the public? I do. Yes, I just Ms. want Carthy. to remind everyone to fill out your little person for the green circle for Hayshire. If you want to be in the circle, you need to color your person. <laughs> we got that at a board meeting in June. I think it was the curriculum meeting. Um, Mrs. Wiltshire was here and did a presentation. So I'm sure she'd give you another blank slate to work with. Maybe at a reduced grade. <laughs> I, does anybody know uh, what the cookie dough, what, what company it is? I'm interested. <laughs> Some of them are really good. <laughs> is there a such thing as bad cookie dough? Yes, right. <laughs> <laughs> $20. Mr. Thurman. Yes, I'd like to um, give a shout out to some kids at Sinking Springs for being the citizens of the month. You might have seen that. And I want to say it's, um, and it goes by the model of spirit, which is self, self control, pride, intelligence, respect, inspiration, and trust. And I want to give congratulations to them. And I wish we could do something like this more often for all the schools in our district when they have these citizens of the month. And the first kid is Blaze Ketterman. He's in fourth grade from Ms. Palmer's class. Second is McKenna Eckhart, fourth grade, Ms. Cubase class. Next one is Jaden Santiago Negron. He's fourth grade, Ms. T. Miller's class. Jameson O'Neill, fifth grade, Ms. Fellinger's class. Madeline Broadbeck, sixth grade, Ms. Alloway's class. Jeremiah Redmond, sixth grade, Ms. Tressless class, and as a proud dad moment, I want to say my daughter Ella Thurman had it for fifth grade Miss Hub's class, and I just wanted to give these kids a shout out and say thank you for doing that at Singing Springs. And why don't we do this for every school if we possibly can? These citizens of the month is special, and she was so excited to come home and tell me. And you know, I even shed a little tear here, therefore, because it was such a proud father moment. And I just wanted to give a shout out to all the kids and all the teachers, especially for having these kids in your class and showing that great example. So thank you, yes, sir. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, with that, this meeting is adjourned. <laughs>